So this is an introduction to a program called Data Explorer that's designed for table analysis, a quick visualization of table data in the form of plots, and some sometimes fairly complex table operations like merging and pivoting. So uh, its layout is simplistic. Um, the table is shown on the left here, the plot area on the right, and the plot options on the uh, lower right, these widgets. And although it looks like a spreadsheet, it's really designed, um, it's not so much designed for individual uh, editing of cells. For example, there are no cell formulas. Um, it's more designed for processing of already existing, uh, existing table data, though it is possible to uh, edit individual cells if you need to. So uh, as an example here, I'm going to open a data set that's uh, available from the application as a set of predefined data sets. Uh, this one is just a, a simple um, uh, simulated data. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything except to show the um, type of table manipulations we can use. So just like a spreadsheet, we can um, uh, click on individual cells. We can actually edit individual cell values, although that's not generally um, the emphasis is on manipulation of the data globally rather than editing individual cells. We can click on uh, and move columns. Um, we can select rows, we can select multiple rows. We can select multiple cells by dragging the mouse. Um, we can control and uh, shift click as well for selections if we need to. Um, and under um, cells, uh, columns can be resized. And on, again, the emphasis isn't on formatting or styling. So uh, colors, for example, uh, aren't supported. Um, anything to do with uh, table styling isn't really supported, although you can increase the font size um, and uh, row spacing for visibility. And on the left side here, you see this is the, uh, the gray area is the row header. And unlike, a, again, different from a spreadsheet, uh, these tables support um, uh, something called an index. And the reason for this is uh, the table widget is based on a, a Python library called pandas where the, the index is fundamental to uh, table operations. And you can toggle the index by clicking here, uh, right clicking in the row header, and that will display the index. At the moment, it's just numbers, so it doesn't really look any different to what we normally show is the uh, row numbers, um, the way a spreadsheet would. But any column can be an index. So I can right click on the row header, sorry, the column header, and set a uh, column to be an index. And then it'll be moved into the uh, row header. And the meaning or the use of this will become clearer later. So I'm going to reset the index again. That moves it back into uh, as a normal column. And um, again, we can, uh, um, as I said, we can uh, delete. Uh, we can do some limited form of editing on the table. For example, I can delete rows. Um, I can uh, I can clear data from cells like this, um, and the program currently supports a single level of undo. So you're going to do the last change, and just to be aware that uh, you shouldn't, uh, although you can undo changes, um, you shouldn't use this as a way of storing your data permanently. You should have your data backed up somewhere else. So the normal way to get data into um, into this application is to import it from a text CSV file or a spreadsheet. And if you are just, uh, before I continue to say about getting your data in, if you want to import uh, tables into this uh, program from a spreadsheet, for example, you might have a spreadsheet that looks like this with various uh, elements of formatting. You might have plots, you might have tables in different locations. You're best to uh, put the data into the raw form that you're interested in. For example, this uh, region here, export just this to a CSV file or even save it as an Excel sheet on its own. And then you import it then uh, into this application um, by using, uh, for example, this toolbar button on the toolbar here. And then you'd import your CSV file. So um, uh, in regards to plotting, this program, one of the main selling points is it's designed for very quick 
plotting of data to get a, a feel for the data, hence the name of the, the program. Uh, so you can explore the data very quickly. And um, as an example of this, um, say I select uh, a group of cells here and the default uh, plot here is line. And I just press either this button or this one and it immediately gives us a, uh, uh, a quick plot. Um, it's going to sort by the index here and replot again. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, you get the idea from a, of a line plot. Then the next kind of plot type is a scatter plot. So the program, whatever data way you set, you make a data selection, table selection, the program will try to interpret for that particular plot type as best it can what kind of plot will uh, will need to be output. So in this case, uh, for a scatter plot, it's taking the first column and it's plotting each successive row as a series against the first column, which is A. So A is the x-axis here, and the other columns are treated as series. Um, I can select the entire table, plot all the data at the same time. We can use multiple subplots, which divides, uh, divides the series, uh, i.e. the columns, into different pl individual plots. So we see them separated here. And I can do the same for, um, so we switch this off again. We go to the next one, a bar plot. And we plot bars. This is as you'd expect. Again, we can plot uh, these as multiple subplots. Um, bar H is um, horizontal bars. Uh, <clears throat> pie chart uh, would be appropriate for small selections, small tables. Um, and then the histogram obviously shows you the distribution of your data. <clears throat> we can change the number of bins. Um, we can plot um, a histogram of multiple columns where they're shown overlaid together, or again, as multiple subplots. Um, and again, a box plot will show the distribution of uh, each the data over each column. Uh, heat maps are as you'd expect. And now the other plots uh, types, well, we'll just show you an area plot, what an area plot looks like. I'm sorry. That looks like a complete mess because it's taken the, um, a, by default it will take the index as the x-axis the or here, and that's uh, it's been sorted uh, in a, in a random fashion by the according to the axis. So um, uh, this is the reason why it looks like this. So uh, again, you know, the plot will be um, the program will try try to interpret your data as it's presented in the table. Um, uh, and a hex bin plot looks like this, which people may not be fam very familiar with. And then the other plot types I won't go into at the moment. So, um, a, and the, the final thing to say about quickly about the plotting is, uh, if we go back to say a, uh, a simple bar plot, um, you can, uh, the, the remainder of the widgets are for formatting uh, on this tab. Uh, for example, the color map, uh, the font, the font size, uh, the line width can be changed. So there's a fair amount of uh, flexibility in how you uh, the end result will look. Um, uh, you can, uh, one very quick uh, uh, aspect of the, the, the plotting here is you can group by a category. So categorical grouping is a very common feature of table analysis and there's various ways to do it in this program. But the simplest way for visualization often is to select one of the columns that you want to group by. It's possible to group by um, up to two columns, say the label. So the label is a categorical column. We can group by uh, this column. If you select multiple subplots, it'll now group um, them into the, rather than grouping by series, by column, it'll group by category that we've chosen here. So, um, and choosing, um, removing multiple subplots will again show us the distribution over uh, each category. So that's a very um, quick and useful way of getting an overview of, the, of the, um, your data if you have some categorizations uh, or classes that you want to group by. Again, to remove, don't you forget to remove this and then we can replot as normal.
it's possible to use table filtering to um, apply queries to a table like you would in a database um, and this is done simply by opening up the filter table uh, um, by pressing this button here in the toolbar um, and we get a, a small um, entry bar here where we can enter our queries so these are like um, entered as text queries um, and you can build up um, a set of queries by joining together using um, a boolean operations so say um, I want to filter this sample table by showing only uh, rows where the value of the column A is greater than uh, 5 for example I say A simply greater than 5 and now you see it's uh, when I press enter or press the supply button it's updated the table now the number of rows displayed is 196 so this is the filter table uh, the, the original table is still there if I close this the original table will return so I haven't changed the data as such it's just displaying a subset if I want to add in a second request or a second query I can join it together with the boolean operation so say I want to say a greater than 5 and b uh, less than 5 for example now that gives me 137 rows out of 400 and I can also use um, a text uh, query by uh, columns where the values are text so um, say I want to see um, all of the rows where the, the label is high this column here and I would enter in um, another and and say label equals high and you notice the difference uh, or there's two particular things about the syntax of this is that you have to use um, double equal sign for equality um, and you have to include the string re requested in, in quotes uh, and um, when I press enter now it gives me only those uh, uh, rows with uh, a high value in the in label uh, I can also use an or symbol here and obviously it gives me a very different result um, and uh, I can I can place some other requests in brackets and that should also well, we'll just change it to see if it works and that works too so you can build up fairly complex um, filtering just through using um, uh, uh, this this um, text entry but uh, uh, you notice that if you make a mistake uh, it won't for example like this it simply won't do anything um, so there isn't particular feedback given on what you've typed so you have to be careful um, and um, it, it is helpful to know some programming or but it does help uh, in, in terms of teaching students about um, uh, boolean algebra and um, uh, the syntax of um, of these kinds of um, structures in, in programming languages. So it's possible to also use this program to do some simple calculations um, using functions. And as I said, the uh, there isn't any such thing as a cell formula in this program rather the um, values are calculated on a row wise or, or column wise basis um, so to illustrate this we're going to use this calculate uh, sorry calculate tool here on the toolbar if we press this button it brings up a small dialog at the bottom and first of all uh, we need to add some uh, data to work with uh, at least one column so this is really a blank table so i'm going to add some data here so first of all i'm going to right click on the row header and add rows so say I just add 50 blank rows um, then I'm going to fill in some data in this column so we right click on the column header here for column A and say fill with data and I'm going to add in some uh, you can add in random noise um, according to a distribution but I'm just going to add in um, uh, data from 0 to 5 in, this, in the range um, so if I leave all the other settings as they are, it will just um, fill up the entire uh, uh, set of rows with that within that range. So the start value is zero, and then the end value is well 4.9. So um, this is the data we we can do uh, now a calculation on, on this column. So if I just say a very simple um, 
and the very simplest calculation is to say x equals a and all that does is it creates a new column x which is the value of a I could say x equals a by 2 you can guess what the value of that is and it's possible then to plot the relationship between the two now um, if you use a simple line plot by default it plots the these columns against the index um, um, so I'm going to use a scatter well this can be switched off of course here I can say now it plots a versus uh, x but I'm going to use a scatter plot and uh, that just draws now uh, the same thing the value of a um, and that we can tell sorry a versus x and now we can tell um, it to update the plot when we've changed by switching uh, this check box, uh, box on here now if I change this uh, formula here it'll have updated the plot I'm going to change this again to, to say that um, x is a to the power of 2 and that's how that's done using two stars here as the syntax for uh, that and now that gives us an entirely different function here um, so um, this uh, module, this aspect of the program might be really more useful as a teaching tool uh, rather than something practical but um, you can again get some fairly complicated formulas in here um, I can add a new column every time I change this value here, say I say y equals x by 5 for example now it adds a new column y which is the result of the calculation uh, x by 5 again I can change the I can select all of these and replot and now that gives the value of y here and the value of x I can uh, put these in multiple subplots like this and replot I can um, say this I can use trigonometric functions so I can say y is equal to sine of a for example and I'm going to change the value of x to another trig function so we can just have a look at them there so those are uh, x is cos of a y is sine of a and in fact I can simply use uh, um, uh, remove the, uh, the the left side of the equation and just write cos a and that will create a new column called cos a rather than having to assign it to a specific name so that's kind of a shortcut as well um, so you can it's just the kind of thing uh, you can also uh, insert a column name if you find that your column names are um, unwieldy and, and, and difficult to type you might have a long column either you should um, rename your columns to make them more convenient to use or you can uh, you can add them in from here so if I say insert column it'll just insert the, the column here the value um, and um, uh, you notice these other uh, settings here recalculate all is designed so that and when you change um, a function when you make a new function that um, changes the value of another function that depends on it, another column that depends on it, which is another, yet another function, then it'll recalculate all of the columns. So um, it's, it's quite, you can see the similarities to using, say, a cell formula in, uh, in a spreadsheet, but it's a very different concept. I'm going to run through a few examples of the kinds of table operations that you can run. So I've got this sample data set and um, uh, the first thing you notice I've removed most of the rows so we only have 12 rows in this table and what I want to show is an example of a merge operation that is merging uh, two tables together that um, have a common, uh, at least one column in common. So the only unique identifier or unique column uh, column that has unique values identifying each row in this table is the date column here so we're going to merge using the date and to create this uh, example um, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new table from this one to merge into containing a subset of the columns so including the date so I'm going to just select 
uh, these three. Then on the right side here, I'm going to choose subtable from selection using this button. And what that does is it creates a new, um, a smaller table below um, the the main one, and that's used in uh, uh, table operations for uh, as a temporary an area for temporarily holding uh, another table. And so to I'm going to remove now, um, sorry, these two columns from the original table, A and B. And then we want to merge um, this table into the, the bottom one. So we pick, we go to the toolbar or we can go to the, the um, table menu here and say, um, say sorry, um, merge or concat tables. Uh, so uh, uh, a concatenation really is just a join Whereas a merge is uh, um, um, emerges based on some criteria um, of commonality between the rows, um, which is provided by um, the columns you select. So if we if we select to uh, merge both on date on the left and right uh, columns, and we say apply, it creates a new table result here for us to preview. And that's the new table has also got 12 rows and you can see that the dates are um, it's merged on the date and now it's joined. So the first three columns of the original table are, are, are still there and then it's merged in the corresponding values for that date. So you can see the first row has now been merged into this corresponding row here. Um, and then we can take this result and copy the table and paste it as a new sheet or replace the current table. So if I copy the table here and close this window, I can, and I add a new sheet, I can simply say paste the table and that'll paste the results here. So it's useful for um, placing our um, results in another sheet temporarily uh, or if we don't want to override the original data. And you can see that um, if I remove um, some of the columns from these, the, the child, the, the subtable, sorry, some of the rows, say delete these rows, and then do the same operation again, merge on the date, and say apply. Now it only uh, retains the information from the rows that are, uh, so that, that's like a, it's like a, a, a set operation, uh, where this is an intersection of the um, names that are only common between uh, both tables because I chose how equals inner here. So that's what this uh, option is for. If I say outer and say apply, it will um, use all the rows that are in either table. And you'll see then that uh, the values of A and B here are empty uh, in the rows that are not present in the lower table. So this can be played around with. Then the next operation I just want to show is how to pivot data. So if we create a new data set from the sample data sets here, from the stack data, stack data is sometimes called um, long form data, where it has a column with categorical variable that's um, repeated over multiple columns, but has unique values in another column. So you see there are multiple possible values over successive dates in this table for the variable A and then for the variable B and C and D. So if I want to, what pivoting means really is to um, create some new columns based on a categorical set of labels. Um, and to do that here, we, we select again from this menu, we can use pivot table. And we want to use, you have to have a unique index to pivot on. And in this case, we have to use date. The column to pivot on, um, that is the variable column is called variable. And here we've only one value column. So we select that one and we say, okay. And now the result is shown in the uh, sub table below. And that is a, um, you can see now we've created f uh, four new columns. So it's a completely new table with an index, um, of the, of the, um, the index we use for the operation, which is the date. Um, so you can see that it, it'll completely transform your data into a form that it, uh, you might find more convenient for plotting or for further processing. So that's what um, a pivot does. And you, you may have um, 
heard of being able to pivot tables in spreadsheets, but uh, it can be quite complicated to do in a spreadsheet or to understand. So this tries to make the process more simple. Then the last example of a table operation is um, handling of um, time series data. So the time series data is commonly found in financial data or in, um, uh, say, uh, experimental uh, data from physical sciences. And uh, to do that, we're going to look at this CO2 time series data set here, which is a plot of the monthly uh, measurements of CO2 over um, um, multiple decades from 1965 up to 1980. So these are monthly values. And the month, this has been, this table has been uh, imported, say, from a, a text file. So the month is a, um, a string value with the year first in this form. And you'll often import um, the dates in, in heterogeneous and different kinds of formats because of the way dates and uh, times are written. And in order to manipulate a time series, you want to convert it into a date time. So each um, column in this program uh, can have different various uh, data types. So you can view these, the current uh, data types uh, or the current um, for each column in your table by looking at table info. This gives you just a, a summary of your table and it's showing you that we have two columns here. The month is an object and the CO2 value is a float, a floating point or a decimal. An object means any column that has a, a text in it or a combination of text and numbers. And so it's, it's um, uh, not a date yet. So we're going to convert it first to a date, the month. So to do that, we right click on the uh, month row a column header and we say um, date time conversion. And all this does is it tries to convert the string values into a date time. And we, we leave the, uh, we don't have to change anything here, we just say OK. And all that does is it now looks a bit different because this is the way date times are printed out in the table. And we go back to table info, uh, sorry, table info, you'll see the um, month is now a date time. So that's the type uh, of data we need. And I'm going to do some resampling. So if I plot this, first of all, if I set the month as the index, and then I just select the CO2 column, and um, I'm just going to change the settings a little, and I plot this. This is the familiar sawtooth structure, and it shows how uh, CO2 levels have increased over this time period. Uh, and this, these are seasonable, uh, seasonal variations in the measurements, but there's a general trend upwards. And say I want to uh, resample this data um, to give a smoother line or to give a, um, a clearer trend line. Um, well, it's relatively simple. We just got the table, time series resampling. And now we, we're given a dialogue that shows the frequencies. That's the unit of time we want to sample in and how we want to sample. For example, take the mean over that period. Um, so these symbols are fairly intuitive. M is for month. Um, uh, w is weekly, D is daily, hourly, seconds, quarters, uh, A is annual. So say I want to resample over um, the data to get the mean over each year instead of the monthly values. I just select A and say OK. The function is mean. And then we get a new table below with the resample values. So this is the mean values for the entire year taken from this table. And if I plot this instead now, we get this smoothed out uh, trend line. The last example I want to show is slightly more advanced plotting tips. If I use, uh, take, uh, bring up the sample iris data set here, uh, you can see and there's this four data co value columns and one class categorical column. If I quickly plot these as a scatter plot, it allows us quickly to look at the relationship between the uh, uh, the length and the other uh, the other three columns. It allows us, as I showed previously, to group by uh, the class. You can look at these as multiple subplots, so you can break down the structure of this category very quickly, and then. Um, I just remove the uh, the grouping, um, and then we can format the plot as I uh, mentioned previously in lots of different ways. So, uh, changing all these settings, 
can make the plot look very different very quickly. And we can add annotation. So these other tabs here are, uh, these are the first tab here, the base options are for the, uh, obviously the basic options that you'd be likely to want to use. There's another tab here um, for annotation, and that allows you to add um, a title to the figure and your own X and Y labels if you need to. So when you replot, you can add your title here. Um, there is another functionality for adding an arbitrary annotation. So I can add in text boxes um, that we can place in arbitrary positions in the plot. Um, uh, if I say, uh, add in the text here and say create, now I can actually click and drag and move around uh, this annotation. So we can use, use this to label plots that we've already made and that we before we want to save them. And the only problem with this at the moment is that when I replot, it shifts, it doesn't retain the position of the label, so that's a bug. So we'll leave that for now. We can clear these. Um, but the um, then the other uh, tab here, styles, allows you to uh, change the look of the plot very quickly by applying a, a predefined styles. So that changes the uh, background, for example. We can use that to make uh, a dark background, like a negative color image. Uh, sorry, negative background, and um, we can use it to have a grayscale plot, and we can reset then to the default settings. Um, and in fact, we can also have a, a 3D plot. So um, if I try to plot, um, if I just simply move to the 3D tab and uh, press plot, it'll make a, by default, a scatter plot from the first three columns that you selected. So it selected these three here. Um, and then I would have to tell it if I wanted to uh, to label this. I can add the labels myself arbitrarily. And again, there is some limited um, um, uh, sorry uh, formatting that you can do of the uh, of the three D plot. Um, and there are different kinds of three D plots that can be used. Um, and, and some of these. It, it'll, it will try to interpret the data as best it can um, for different kinds of plots. So if, if it doesn't plot, it means it's that uh, you um, it can't interpret your, your table properly. So uh, I've just selected uh, I've just selected this. So it's taken it's made a surface plot. It's kind of largely meaningless for this kind of data, but it just shows you that, you know, based on the data that you, you choose, you'd have to supply it with the data in the right context for these some of these plots to make sense. But basically, uh, that's how you um, that's how you make a 3D plot. And then um, the last thing to show for uh, uh, more advanced plotting is um, go back to the 2D plot. So if I just say this as a maybe let's use a let's create a very small simple bar plot and then I want to it's possible to um, arrange different plots from different tables in one uh, figure um, in a grid layout so this can be done with the grid layout tab here and if you switch to this you see several um, uh, entry boxes so it's not the most intuitive to use but once you get used to it it's fairly straightforward it, it allows you to, um, if I, first of all, switch on Use Grid Layout, and that'll tell it to use these settings. And by default, it says you, you want to split the plot in, in the figure into um, a grid of, of an arbitrary number of rows and columns. So in this case, the default is two by two. And I say that the current axis is row, column, a row and column one. So if I plot now, it's overlaid the original. I should first clear the, the figure, then replot. Now it puts my current plot. I'm just going to make the font smaller so we can see. Now it puts the current plot in the top left hand corner of the grid because I've told it that there's two by two layout and that that should be in the um, uh, top row and column. Then if I tell it, if I change this current column uh, value to two. Now it's going to place uh, it in row one, column two, which is here. So I'm going to just make a different kind of plot, say this one. Now if I plot, it places the new uh, plot here. And so you can build up a more complex set of, uh, more complex figure. Um, and I could, uh, 
take, for example, uh, a, a data from, let's go and clear this, uh, another, um, say I just take some arbitrary data from here, copy this, uh, or I'll copy the whole table, right? And make a new and paste this table in. This is a completely different table. I can mix now uh, data plot from another table and place it in here. So I, for example, could just simply plot this, these values here as a bar plot, and now that would appear here. Um, I can um, go back to the grid. The, the other um, uh, option here is for column and row span. So I can tell it that the current, I want the current, if I change it to row two, column one, and column span two, and now I go back to uh, this and change it to uh, say well just say keep it as a bar plot and now I plot the same data here is plotted as a bar plot but now it spans both uh, both columns because I've told it that I want a column span to be two so you can mix and match uh, data from different tables into one figure and uh, when you save a project, it, it usually just saves the currently selected settings for plotting. So some of the plot information is retained, but this complexity isn't. So, but you can, what you can do uh, as you're working is to store a plot using the plots menu, and that just uh, creates a new um, plot in the uh, a new figure uh, and stores it. So that if you overwrite this or you delete your tables and you, you you find that you want to return to that figure and save it you simply call it up from the menu here and that figure is now available um, and you can resize it uh, before you save you can't replot really on directly onto this though this is so you should have a finished uh, figure before you decide to store the plot but I mean, of course you can always save directly from the main um, the main window as you go along